Good afternoon and uh, a very hearty welcome uh, to the business leaders, professionals, academicians, students, uh, the government officials, distinguished panelists, academics from SMU, ISB faculty, staff. Welcome to the fifth edition of the Singapore-India Business Dialogue, organized in partnership with ISB and SMU. Uh, may, uh, the focus of the theme is managing disruptions in the age of technology with special focus on education, fintech, and innovation. Uh, may I request uh, to make a few housekeeping announcements before we start the session? Uh, those of you who are looking for the Wi-Fi network, please look for ISB SIBD at 2018. And the password is SIBD 2018, all in lowercase. So please use that. And also feel free to use the hashtag SIBD 2018 in case you want to tweet in between the sessions. And uh, may I request uh, you to turn your phones on silent or switched off mode. And with this, uh, let us begin the inaugural session. I invite Dean Srivastava to give the welcome address to the gathering. Please come over, sir. <laughs> professor Srivastava is the Dean of the Indian School of Business and the Novartis Professor of Marketing Strategy and Innovation. He comes with an experience of over 30 years as an academic and administrator. Before joining ISB, he was provost and deputy president of academic affairs at Singapore Management University. Prior to SMU, he held distinguished research chairs and senior management positions at the University of Texas at Austin and Emory University in Atlanta. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, Professor Arno de Meyer, President Singapore Management University, other visiting dignitaries from Singapore, officials of the government, captains of Indian industry, colleagues from academia, friends from the media, faculty, students, ladies and gentlemen, a very, very good afternoon to you. On behalf of ISB, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the fifth edition of the Singapore-India Business Dialogue. So although it's the fifth edition, it is uh, the first time we are hosting it out of ISP. The previous four editions were out of Singapore. And um, in the Indian School of Business and Singapore Management University will alternate. So next year we go back to Singapore. And uh, so this is, uh, this is an event that is jointly organized uh, you know, by SMU and ISP. And, uh, I really uh, welcome the SMU team uh, led by Professor De Meyer, and we look forward to the inputs, uh, you know, from from Singapore. Uh, India and Singapore enjoy a pretty robust uh, relationship, uh, and this is being uh, this was elevated to a strategic partnership by a joint declaration on strategic partnership that was signed between the two nations in 2015. Um, Singapore is uh, India's uh, 10th largest uh, trading partner and uh, it is uh, also a leading uh, destination for a lot of uh, commercial activity in the, in the financial sector and um, it's also within ASEAN, uh, Singapore today is the second largest uh, you know, trading partner. Um, importantly, uh, forget about the commercial side, uh, the Singapore India relationships are based on shared values and uh, also a little bit of a common heritage, if you will. And there's a lot of convergence of, uh, of interests. Uh, there are, um, at this moment, uh, I think uh, well over 5,000 Indian companies that have a presence in Singapore. And the hope is that this kind of a dialogue, this kind of interaction is going to lead to a greater flow, if you will, uh, you know, from the, uh, from the Singapore side. Uh, we have, uh, you know, over 20 uh, bilateral, you know, mechanisms between the two countries. These are dialogues, various kinds of exercises. And uh, the Singapore-India business dialogue is one of them, and we hope it could, is going to become a, a more important one over time as we fold in industry as well as, uh, you know, government into it. 
This uh, fifth edition of the Singapore India Business Dialogue is going to focus on three areas uh, that we've chosen. One is uh, looking at the context of uh, education. The second is looking at innovation. And within innovation, the third area is looking at fintech. Uh, these themes, uh, as we understand, uh, correspond closely to the potential uh, collaborative discussions that will take place in about a month from now when PM Modi heads with his team you know, to Singapore. So it's sort of a precursor, if you will, uh, you know, to, to the continued uh, dialogue uh, between the uh, two nations. In recent times, uh, we have witnessed uh, all kinds of uh, disruptions uh, due to digital uh, technologies and, uh, and transformations. And uh, these are all over Asia. I mean, uh, if you look at, uh, uh, you know, Didi from uh, China, they were combating with Uber uh, from the U.S. And now we have uh, Grab Taxi from Singapore who's joined the fray and Ola from this part of the world. So, you know, lots of disruption going within industries, constant, constant change. Uh, if we look at um, Netflix and Amazon Prime, uh, and, uh, you know, we had uh, Flipkart in India, and now Amazon was battling them, and Walmart has joined into the battle. So when we talk about uh, Singapore and India, when we talk about uh, Asia or South Asia, these are actually global uh, battlegrounds, if you want to think of it that way. But, uh, but uh, you know, global uh, uh, flow of talent as well. And uh, um, it was uh, interesting, uh, about a week ago in this very room, uh, we had a, an academic conference on, um, on marketing strategies in emerging markets. And one of the participants in the panel said, hey, you guys have it all wrong. And uh, so what we had it wrong was we were calling it uh, strategies in emerging markets. He said, no, no, no. To get the attention of the world, you have to say it's growth markets. And uh, just uh, came back uh, at about 1 o'clock last night from Taiwan. And uh, so I was talking to a company called Advantech. And, uh, you know, they are uh, working in both uh, Bangalore and Pune. And uh, within the next year, they'll expand in uh, Jaipur, in Hyderabad, in Delhi, in Kolkata. And so I was asking them, why are you making this investment? And uh, the investment uh, they were making is really in the opportunity. So if you think of uh, Singapore as the economic hub of, uh, of ASEAN, of Southeast Asia, and you look at uh, cities like uh, Hyderabad and Mumbai, Bangalore as economic hubs within India, uh, what we see is uh, a golden opportunity uh, for the, not only the two nations, but in this moment, the two cities to, to work together and uh, explore the opportunities uh, that are there in this part of the world. Um, while we are talking about uh, you know, technologies and fintech and innovation and so on, one of the topics that keeps always coming up is the demographic dividend uh, that is yeah. there in India. But it could also be a demographic disaster if we don't do something about education, about educating uh, you know, the large number of, uh, of young people that are in this market. So, you know, that uh, really underscores the value of education itself and the role of technology in, in education. And um, we, when we think of a, um, of a strategic dialogue, which is uh, transnational, we also have to look at what is going to be the impact, in, let's say, of education itself on innovation not only just the impact of innovation on, on education. So in this, uh, uh, in this uh, program today, we have uh, three areas that we're focusing on. One is uh, the digital disruptions and attendant market dynamics uh, that are shortening the, the, the contextual life of, uh, of information. What this means really is that uh, management professionals have to 
reinvent themselves. When I talk to senior managers, C-level people in companies, uh, one of the common refrains is, oh, my, my younger employees are fine. They're just fine with the changes that are taking place in the world. Can you do something about our senior managers? So this may be a situation where we look at reverse mentoring, where the junior people start mentoring the senior managers. But uh, you know, the, the transformation is, is not going to be easy unless we can change things at the top. So given these, uh, the challenges, the first session really is looking at uh, changing the role of management education with, the, uh, with perspectives from East and the West. And uh, the second area that we're focusing on is really um, uh, initiating the, the FinTech uh, dialogue. This is, which is both a disruption as well as a innovation. So here are the incredible things that are happening uh, within India. And uh, we all talk about the Aadhaar card and we talk about the India stack. And uh, with the Aadhaar card, we have over 1.2 billion people who have the biometric identity. And just to understand the scale of technology behind it, I was talking to UIDAI, which is a unique identity uh, you know, initiative in Delhi. And for each uh, identity that is created, it has to be compared, the 10 fingerprints and the two retinas and the other information has to be compared against uh, 1.2 billion other records. So just the sheer technology that is backing this up is, uh, is really awesome. So, you know, between the, uh, between the Aadhaar card and the, the India stack, uh, we are seeing some very, very rapid transformation in the, uh, in the, in the financial sector. And uh, so while there's been a lot of debate on how, um, you know, how uh, FinTech is, uh, and the Aadhaar card might impact uh, the public sector, the, you know, what, what is being called PDS or public distribution system, uh, the impact on the private sector is, anonym, is enormous. Uh, as an example, in Hyderabad, you know, we are cleared at the airport within a second when they scan our, 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 car, our, our, our boarding passes. And uh, this, the process used to take longer. Uh, in, the, in the hospitals, uh, they are now onboarding people in three to four minutes, and it used to take them 25 to 30 minutes to admit people. So the value of information, the value of analyzing that information, the value of using that information in the business processes in the private sector, in my opinion, is even higher. And we haven't even begun to look at that. So you know, FinTech is a, is a sort of a narrow focus, if you will. And uh, but it's going to have, uh, have tremendous uh, you know, impact. Um, Interestingly, uh, while uh, India is going through a lot of transformation, uh, there's lots of uh, new ideas uh, that have come in from China, uh, from uh, organizations such as Alipay and Financials, Tencent, and many of you may not know, but Paytm, which has grown from about 20 million customers to over 300 million customers, is actually backed by, uh, by Alipay. So, some of the innovations are coming from the West, like the cryptocurrency. Some of them are coming from China. And uh, Singapore has done a wonderful job of taking these ideas, you know, you, know, you know, creating a space for fintech integration to take place. And we, you know, we look forward to uh, learning from there. Uh, interestingly, uh, this uh, ISP itself is anchored in the part of uh, Gachibali that is now known as the financial district. Why is it known as the financial district? It's because the ICICI tech sector is here. Uh, HSBC uh, tech sector is also moving here. Uh, DBS Bank from Singapore has started the tech sector here. And the Reserve Bank of India's tech sector, I mean, uh, technology operations also coming from Hyderabad. So, so b between uh, you know, Singapore and, uh, and Hyderabad, we can have a wonderful connect uh, on, the, on the fintech side. Uh, finally, um, let me comment that the disruptive changes uh, require you know, new strategies and uh, organizational agility because markets, with the rate of change that is taking place, 
the, the markets are very, very dynamic, and it's not just uh, fintech. If we look at uh, e-commerce or we look at the airline industry, we all hear about uh, dynamic pricing. All these things are really based on real-time decision-making, uh, you know, which is uh, based on utilization of information. And uh, so as we look at uh, management itself, management practices are changing. Uh, certainly, if we look at management education, the technology it, it's, is changing management education also. And uh, we, can, uh, we can look at uh, the old uh, classrooms and now we can see a lot of uh, mobile learning uh, you know, taking place. And uh, the, the rate of innovation uh, has certainly accelerated. So one of the issues really is that uh, information that is uh, two, three years old, or insights that are two, three years old may be kind of late. And therefore, as managers, we need to worry about how do we change practices? How do we become, become more agile? and how do we keep up with changes that are taking place in industry. Uh, so, so the first session that we will uh, get into will be looking at the changing role of management education uh, with, uh, with the perspectives uh, uh, from the East and West. So with that, uh, uh, we would, uh, I would like to invite uh, uh, Professor Arno de, Weyer, Arno de Meyer on stage. And um, also, uh, we will be uh, moving into the next session and uh, Professor Venkata Ramana. Uh, if you also come on the stage, please. Thank you. Arno Venkata. Thank you, Raj, for the warm welcome and setting the context for the rest of the day. May I request Professor Anu D. Meir to make the opening remarks to the gathering, please? Uh, Professor Meir is the fourth president of the Singapore Management University. Previously, he was the director of Judge Business School at the University of Cambridge, where he was professor of management studies and fellow of Jesus College. He was associated for 23 years with INSEAD, where he held various senior academic and administrative positions, including founding dean of INSEAD's Asia campus in Singapore. May I welcome him to address, please? Thank you. Uh, Professor Rajendra Sivastava, dean of the Indian School of Business, distinguished panelists and guests, faculty and students of ISB, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome also from my side to this uh, Singapore-India business dialogue. Uh, and I uh, have heard several times here when I was arrived uh, late last night and this morning that everybody says, it's warm here in Hyderabad. I can tell you it's cooler than it was in Singapore when I left it. Uh, so um, it, it feels better here. Um, so when I say a very warm welcome to the Singapore-India business dialogue, I mean it, of course, not literally, but we are delighted as SMU to jointly organize the fifth edition of this uh, business dialogue with our host, the Indian School of Business. This is not a new <clears throat> event for us. Uh, we launched it in actually 2012, and I have to say it was Professor uh, Srivastava who launched it uh, as a dialogue at SMU to promote the sharing of insights and knowledge on issues and developments that are of interest, of course, to Singapore, but also India and Asia at large. And uh, through this process, uh, we as a Singapore Management University hope to contribute to the deepening of the excellent bilateral relationships that Raj already referred to. And indeed, uh, Prime Minister Modi is coming at the end of this month uh, for the Shangri-La Dialogue and will also give a major uh, policy speech in Singapore about the collaboration between the two countries. As uh, Prof. Raj already indicated, this year's dialogue is themed managing disruptions in the age of technology. Uh, and it's about how can we provide 
interesting strategic responses to the digit, uh, disruptive innovations. And perhaps, and as Raj already indicated, uh, look for opportunities for strategic partnerships between Singapore and India in this regard. Uh, as he explained, we are going to talk about education, and I will take off my hat as the president and put up my hat as a, uh, as a uh, teacher uh, to talk about what I think about uh, how um, education is disrupted. We also will talk about fintech and innovation, of course. Now, why do we have this focus on managing uh, innovation uh, in the digital transformation age, uh, managing uh, disruption? In fact, uh, I was having a very similar dialogue uh, in Shanghai uh, two weeks ago when I was at the Singapore University, sorry, the Shanghai University for Finance and Economics, where we also had an SMU Global Forum. Um, and strangely enough, or maybe actually logically, um, the theme of that forum was very uh, similar, Expl exploring also the next phase of growth for China and Singapore and how the, we can help each other to become global leaders in innovation. Um, we are at SMU really interested in this topic. Uh, we are interested in the uh, topic of digital transformation and for those among you who don't know us very well, we are like ISB, a business school, but we also have a school of economics, a school of social sciences, a school of law, a school of um, accountancy, and then finally a school of information systems and computing. And uh, we are in the uh, very privileged situation uh, because we are a relatively small university in Singapore, in the middle of the city on very uh, limited uh, area of land. We, each time I come to uh, uh, ISB, I think I could probably build about seven uh, universities on this space. Um, <laughs> At least uh, we, well, we also have only 710 square kilometers in Singapore, so we have to be very careful with every square meter. But um, uh, we are very interested in uh, the, we have the advantage of being a small uh, university where the different schools actually are very close to each other and actually can uh, and do work together with each other. So we are actually specializing now in law, in the influence of technology on law, or the influence of law on technology, because it goes in the two directions. Uh, we have our School of Social Sciences working very closely together with the School of Information Systems. We've completely transformed our programs in accountancy to take into account the role of analytics uh, and big data. So um, we are actually really, as a university, very interested in what the uh, ph phenomenon of digital transformation can do to the different disciplines that we have at the university. Uh, we actually, as a small university, have, ex have chosen for a number of areas of excellence, uh, or focus, I should say, that is finance and financial markets, analytics for business, consumer, and social insights. We also are, and that's probably very different from here in, Singapore, uh, in India, uh, contrary to what Raj already said about the demographic dividend, we don't have that anymore. We have aging people. Uh, it's an aging society. so. The third area of uh, excellence is aging and healthcare management. The fourth one is urban management and sustainability. Um, and it's around these four or five areas that we try to build um, uh, our research activities. Um, Raj already mentioned that education plays a very big role uh, in uh, enhancing uh, or improving the society. Uh, and we are also committed, of course, to f nurture what we call future ready students. I've never seen a future not ready student, but uh, uh, it's now very popular or very, um, uh, to use that term, future ready. Um, but what we try to in, uh, ensure at the university is like here, that is that we constantly adopt, adapt our, um, our uh, uh, curriculum, that we constantly change uh, the way we uh, teach, what we teach, because we want to make sure that what we offer to our students and what we offer finally to the employers of our students our people uh, are, uh, are, uh, is an education that actually uh, is in tune with what is needed today. Um, in that context, and we are a very small country, uh, as I said, 710 square kilometers is probably barely uh, the size of Hyderabad, uh, but uh, uh, in such a small country, one of the things that we really need to do very well is look at globalization and internationalization. Um, cross-cultural learning, preparing our students to work in a globalizing world, whatever Mr. Trump is doing, uh, it will be a global world tomorrow. 
um, and it is actually already a global world today, we need to prepare our students for uh, that global world. That brings me to the importance of partnerships. Um, we, as a university, work very much in partnership uh, with uh, our local partners, industry, uh, and industry is always a preferred partner for us, but externally we also forge partnerships and develop collaborations with leading foreign universities. Uh, we always hope that we can bring students and faculty together from different institutions uh, to prepare them to work in that globalized world. One such example of a partnership is, of course, the one that we have with the Indian School of Business. We signed two years ago a memorandum of understanding with ISB to share best practices to leverage on each other's expertise. We organized the first dialogue in, at SMU in Singapore in 2016, and I'm pleased that we have continued to work together to deliver this second dialogue to contribute to industry and academic developments in the region. We look forward to, work, con to continue to work with ISB to further program collaborations in the postgraduate space and to strengthen the relationships between our two institutions. In closing, uh, because I will now change into my other role as a panelist, but in closing, as a president of the Singapore Management University, I'd like to thank all of our speakers and panelists for their participation in this event. And I also would like to express my sincere appreciation to the Indian School of Business for partnering with SMU to make this dialogue possible. I wish you an enjoyable and informative dialogue ahead. Uh, and also, I would say, uh, I can't give you a date yet, but think about it. It could be very interesting to come to the other dialogue uh, next time, next year, in Singapore. I'll invite you, uh, all of them already now, to join us at that moment. Thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of the afternoon.